Hey guys, welcome to another episode of AWS Workshop Series. Now this is the module 2. So in the module 1, we developed the front end already. And in module 2, we are going to develop our back end application. So the back end of Misfit is a containerized application where we are going to host it in AWS ECS or Elastic Container Service. So in order to host a container in ECS, we have to do a couple of things. First, we need to set up the private network where our containers will be hosted and then actually create the containers and maintain them using AWS ECS services. So in the last video, we discussed how to build the private network and we covered that theoretical part. And this video, I'm going to cover the theoretical part in creating, running and maintaining containers in AWS ECS. So let's get started. So as we already mentioned, it's the backend that we are going to containerize and we are going to use ECS and we are using a particular launch type called AWS Fargate in Elastic Container Service so that we don't have to manage the compute resources in our cluster. So it is managed by AWS. And once we have hosted the containers in the AWS ECS, we will expose them through a load balancer. And we are going to launch multiple containers of our backend for high availability and we will expose the traffic to the backend through a load balancer. So all the traffic will first reach to the load balancer and from the load balancer, it will be balanced across all the containers of our backend application. So about our ECS cluster, we are going to use Fargate launch type. Let AWS manage the compute, memory and storage for our cluster. And there are basically two launch types that is ECS is supported. First one is EC2 launch type and the other one is Fargate launch type. If you want to have more control over your compute, in your cluster, then you should go for EC2 instance type. If not, you can simply use AWS Fargate where you don't have to worry about maintaining your compute resources in your clusters, which is quite convenient. Now our ECS cluster have different constructs. Let's take task definitions and services first. So what is the task definition guys? Now task definition is the blueprint of our containerized application. Now our containerized application is based on Docker. So in order to spin up a container, we will use the task definition as the blueprint. So first we need to create a task definition by stating what is the container image and how much memory and CPU you need and what are the environment variables that you want to incorporate with the container. All that the blueprint is called the task definition. So once you have the blueprint, then you can instantiate task or containers basically from that task definition. And this task definition is basically a JSON document. So as I previously mentioned, we mentioned, you know, what is the Docker image, environment variable, launch type. This is very important. Are we going to use EC2 launch type or a Fargate launch type? Do we want to manage the EC2 or the compute in our cluster or just use Fargate and let AWS to manage the compute? So this launch type we will specify in the task definition. So once you have defined the task definition, then we can simply launch a service in ECS. So service will require what is the task definition that you need to spin up containers. And also you have to say how many tasks or containers do you want to spin up from this task definition. And you can specify what is the desired count of containers that you need to have all the time. So let's say you mentioned like I need five containers running our backend application. And when you launch the service, then service will make sure if any container goes down, spin up another container and make sure that desired count is maintained all the time. And also a quite important thing is that you can run a service behind the load balancer, which we'll do in this application. So now let's clarify this with a diagram. Let's see, this is your ACS cluster. So in this cluster, we are going to run containers. Let's say we are running five containers. Now in order to run these containers, you need to have some compute power. Not only compute, you need to have memory as well. So this cluster should provide compute and memory. So in order to provide compute, memory and storage, you have two options. First one is you can launch EC2 instances for this cluster. So if your cluster is backing up by the EC2 containers managed by you, this is called EC2 launch type. So you have to manage all these EC2 instances. If you don't want to do that, you can simply use AWS Fargate launch type. In that case, what you have to do is specify how much memory and CPU is required for your task in the task definition. And when you're creating the service, let's say your service is called Misfit Backend. And here you will specify how many containers or tasks in AWS terms that you need to have up all the time. And what is the task definition? 
the service should use to spin up these containers and whether or not these containers are behind an elastic load balancer. And when you try to start this service, Fargate will look at you know, how much resources it requires, it will provision them, it will manage all the resources in terms of compute, memory storage, and you don't have to worry about it. All right, now back to our slides. Now we should know about task networking. Now what is a task is basically a container that is instantiated from a task definition. So those tasks or containers are now running inside our cluster. So how do you attach this container into our VPC that we previously created? Because we need to run these containers inside our private network. So we have more control over our containerized application. So in order to do that, we have to do task networking. Since we are using Fargate launch type, where the resources are maintained by AWS, we have to use AWS VPC network mode. Now there are several network modes we can use for task. The most popular ones are bridge network and this AWS VPC network modes. So with AWS VPC network mode, you can run your tasks or the containers inside your VPC in a particular subnet. You can spin up those tasks in a public subnet or a private subnet. So how does it do that? So basically when you choose AWS VPC network mode, AWS will set up an elastic network interface or we call it ENI for each and every task. Now ENI or the elastic network interface is the entry or the communication interface for our task to connect with our VPC. So you have to add some additional configuration into your task definition where our tasks are based upon. So in the task definition we have to mention if you are using AWS VPC network mode you know to which subnet this task should be launched to. Not only that, but also the security group that we should use for this particular task. Now we already know from the previous video, the security groups are operating at ENI or Elastic Network Interface at the compute resource. So in this case, in the container, you have a ENI and on ENI, we will have our security group. So security group will decide what inbound traffic is allowed and what outbound traffic is allowed. We explained a lot about this in the previous video. And since we are specifying in the task definition to which subnet we are going to launch this task, we can either choose public subnet or a private subnet. So if we specify a public subnet, then the task or our container will receive a private IP within the public subnet IP range. So we already know our public subnet is already connected to an internet gateway. So at launch time, if the task want to pull the Docker image from the registry, like if you are hosting the Docker image on Docker Hub or if it is hosted in ECR or Elastic Container Registry that is provided by AWS. Either case, to pull up those images, it will connect to the internet via the internet gateway that is attached to the public subnet. Now in case if you want to spin up those tasks in a private subnet, to pull the images, it's going to use the NAT gateway and access internet and pull the Docker image in order to run the containers. So this is the reason why we need to set up our private network before configuring our containers in ECS. Now let's use a diagram to get it more clarified. As you can see, this is our VPC in our AWS account. And the containers that is inside our cluster is powered by AWS Fargate. So we are not managing the resources. And since we are using the network mode AWS VPC, you have to specify subnet security group in the task definition. So when our service is launching this task from the task definition, it knows to attach an elastic network interface for each and every task and bind this task to the specified subnet and attach a security group for each and every ENI. Say that we launch this task in a public subnet. Now, when you are launching the task, the task has to connect to the container registry. So it can be Amazon ECR or a Docker Hub. So it will use the internet gateway to connect to the internet and you know, pull these images from the container registry. Now finally, let's talk about the load balancing part. Now we mentioned a service can be run behind a load balancer. So when you set up a load balancer for your service, the load balancer becomes the single point of contact for all the outside traffic. Now we need to configure listeners on the load balancer and we will add some rules into the listener. so load balancer can inspect the traffic coming into it 
against those rules and direct them to the matching target group. I know there are several new words like listeners, target groups and rules. We'll get to that in a bit. Now target groups are nothing but some logical grouping of your tasks or the containers. And the target groups can have targets of type instances or IP addresses. Since we are using Fargate, each and every one of our tasks will receive an IP address that is configured on the ENI. If you are using EC2 launch type, not Fargate, then you will have some EC2 instances where you can group as a certain target group. And as I previously mentioned, Load Balancer has listeners configured with a port and a protocol. And the listeners have rules that will direct traffic to the target groups if matched. And that way, you have full control over your load balancing. Have a look at this diagram. Now, these are your targets in ECS. All these targets are running in our ECS cluster, right? And each and every one of these tasks, they will receive an IP address and all these as well. This is because we configured the task networking as AWS VPC. So each and every one of these will receive an ENI or Elastic Network Interface. And each ENI will have an IP address from the range of the specified subnet. If, if it is a public subnet, those IPs will be in the range of public subnet, otherwise in the private subnet IP range. So anyway, the point is, each and every target will have an IP address. So now you can group these targets into target groups. Now these are some logical grouping. Now in our Misfit application, we will only have a one target group because it's the same backend application running on all these containers. But think about a different application. Now if you consider an application that comprised of multiple containers, let's say this application has a application server, and a caching server and also the database as containerized application. So there are three separate containerized applications, right? And imagine there are two containers in the ECS cluster with the application server. And there are three containers for our caching server in our ECS. And there are another three containers having the database. And all these containers are running in one ECS cluster. Let's say it's this one. Okay. For example, let's say this is the app server. And this is the caching server. And this is the database. Okay. Now your client application wants to talk to the caching server. This traffic should only go to this particular target group, right? Because these are the targets that, that host the caching server. It should not reach out to the application server or the database server. So that is why we have the target groups. So in the load balancer, we will have listeners. So in these listeners, we will have some rules. So these rules could be path based. So these rules will specify, okay, if the traffic is destined to the caching server, take them to this particular target group. So in this target group, it will have these targets or the containers of the caching server, which will serve for the request. So that's why we have this logical grouping. And another very important thing is, guys, Load Balancer will do health checks at the target group level. Say that both these targets or the containers for the application server went down, then the Load Balancer will immediately identify with the health check because health check is not responding. And with the help of the service, Load Balancer will spin up another two targets in this particular target group, replacing these dead containers and make sure the traffic is always served. So I think now you know the theoretical part belonging to this module. So you know how to set up the virtual private network and also how to create and manage containerized application in your VPC. So now let's go and build it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Wow.